1 lever arm should equal D2 lever arm times body weight. Okay? Body weight. Hopefully, it will be in the center of your body. Okay? Center of the joint. Okay? Because when you're standing on one leg, that's your axis. Correct? Unless you got Perthes disease, then it's somewhere a little different than that, right? What's the most effective hip abductor? Thank you. For a moment there, I thought this would be a real long <coughs> semester. Glute medius. Very powerful. What plane? Coronal. Coronal, frontal, plane, abductor. Okay, G medius. Would it make sense then that D1 is from here and D2 is from here? <coughs> so, glute medius, the amount of force that the glute medius can, can give you times D1 should equal D2 times body weight. Equilibrium formula, right? You with me? If my patient is big, <coughs> how much harder does the glute medius have to work? An equivalent amount of big to equal that formula. If I've got a skinny mini, they can have a skinny mini glute medius. Okay? So when everybody thinks of this, what, what gait do you think of? What's it called? The pathologic gait pattern. Starts with a T. Tendelenburg gait, okay? So, there's a compensated and an uncompensated Tendelenburg gait. You guys know the difference? Yes. Compensated is they take their body and move it up and over. Why do they do that? What does that do to this formula? What does it do to the lever arm of D1 by doing this? So your hip is going to come out to here now, right? It's going to lengthen D1, which tells you what can the hip abductor do. It has to work more or less to do the same amount. It has to work less. Can you see how that's efficient? Okay. What does it do to their body weight? It doesn't change it, right? Good answer. But what does it do to D2? So what I'm doing is I'm taking this here, okay, and I'm now moving the pelvis into this position. There's your sacrum there. So I moved your pelvis this way, right? So D1 is going to be, um, it should be larger. That's a bad diagram. But as this thing goes out, as this line approaches out here, you can see it's going to be that much longer, right? Yeah. You with me? Okay. So D2 is going to get... Shorter. So do they get lighter? In essence, they do. From a physics standpoint, they do. But all you've done is you've moved their body weight closer to the center mass. So it's easier to control the body mass. It's less, okay, because it's not sitting out here on a long bridge. It's just a short bridge now. And the lever arms have changed. So the formula still stands. If you de increase this, you decrease this. But to keep the formula equal, this, this increases and this can decrease. Can you see how it just shifts around? So a compensated Trendelenburg reduces or increases the compression on that joint. Decreases because compression on that joint is directly related to what muscle? The amount of compression that the glute medius can, can force because there's origin insertion, there's your compression force. So the compression across that joint is directly related to how strong that muscle has to contract. A hot inflamed joint full of fluid and angry cartilage is going to like more or less compression. Less, right? So you want this to work less. How do you make that work less? Increase the lever arm. How do you do that? Tip them up and over. Again, which side? Good side. Good side. Left or right? I have two good sides. Ah. Intimate knowledge. ACL, right? Dr. Fonda. Yes, 
That's why I recognize you. Did you pay for this course? What's for me? Did you pay for this course? Uh, I think so. Okay. I hope so. I'll, well, I'll see you next week if you didn't. One of your classmates will play. Yes? What is D1 like on the glute medius? Is that a specific spot? Or it, D1 is just example? the length of that lever arm. X. Okay. X gets bigger or small. I just didn't know if there's a certain point on that. But it's the center of the joint to the perpendicular 90 degrees off that. Okay. Does that help? And this D2 is 90 degrees off that. Okay. So, um, which side do I put the cane on? Because you're going to see patients with both. So when I step down, I push down here. When I push down, I get a ground reactive force that pushes up and pushes me up and over. Sweet. Okay? Opposite. Okay? Opposite. Don't do what house does. Okay? It looks cool. It looks more pathologic. So opposite side. Push down, pushes up, helps tilt you over. So what have I done? I've changed one of my lever arms. I made D2 all the way up to here now. In fact, if I had a cane that was that long, that high, and I could do this, I would have to push down very little bit to change that, right? Got it? Cane, opposite side, because of this. Uncompensated Trendel and Burke. Step, drop. Correct? That is the, in fact, it's the pathologic Trendelenburg gait that you see, correct? You with me? Step, drop. So body weight is winning because this is tipped over to here. As this pelvis drops over here on my left side, this gets carried over to here and my D1 gets shorter. Are you with me? Stop me if you're not. Please. <laughs> Semester is like a bunch of zombies. Do you agree that D1 gets shorter? Yeah. Okay, with conviction. All right, we'll have fun. I'm a little nerdy. I mean, you know, that's just who I am. But just I mean, work with me, okay? So as this drops, D1, because this glute medius line drops to here, and that shortens D1, which increases D2, which makes them seem fatter, right? Glute medius has to work more or less? More. more. Okay. So how many hip patients do you think walk in with a Trendelenburg gait where I have a painful hip? Not many because they automatically go into less pain. Less pain is probably the one that biomechanically makes more sense. Okay. The ones that don't make the correction are the ones who are not yet in pain. pain. And this is what you see in your office. And so if they're not yet in pain there, they probably came into your office because they're in pain somewhere else. If I drop on this side, my knee is going to go in or out. In. So they may come in with knee pain. If my knee goes in, my arch will go with it and probably fall. They may come in with plantar fascial pain or medial heel pain. Okay? So if they come in with foot or knee things, but you see this dip, Draw the formula. Tell them they're doing it wrong. Okay. Show them how to increase their D1. All right. Give them some glute medius exercises and help them pair the abdominal and the glute together. Okay. Does this make sense? Can you see how important? That is?